Internationally acclaimed composer, arranger, pianist, producer, and recording artist Rashid Lani has created a name for himself in the world of music, particularly jazz. He's a respected session musician who has worked with a variety of musicians around the world, and one of his notable contributions is the composition and performance of a song that celebrated Nelson Mandela's release from prison called The People Want Mandela. I can almost uh, hear the voice of Matlatini there when he sang that song. He's also participated in creating movie scores and recently completed the soundtrack for the movie Kalusha, the Solomon Matlangu story, which has won itself three Rapid Lion Awards so far. And Rashid is with us on the show to discuss his long career in the industry. Rashid. Hey, Tom. Pleasure to catch up with you, uh, my friend. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you. And let me appreciate the performance on Saturday. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, we appreciated that uh, Deno was given that kind of support by veteran musicians like wow, yourself. Wow, thank you. I mean, it's unbelievable to think that he just done 14 on Saturday. Yes. And he has, he has the world at his feet as well already. It's so incredible. Yeah. And you as uh, modest and unassuming as you are, <laughs> have traveled around the world, worked with some of the best, the biggest, including the best, the biggest here in South Africa. Oh, I want to go back to that uh, track of the People Want Mandela. Oh, okay. It was a great moment then, I mean, to get all of the top South African musicians working together. I mean, it was groundbreaking, really. And um, I mean, uh, prior to that, uh, um, or, or rather, shortly after that, we, uh, when uh, Madiba was released from prison, we, uh, the 12, there were 12 musicians who actually met him four days after his release. Yes. And uh, we, we met him in, in per, uh, uh, Madiba in person. And the aura of light that was around him was so disarming. Yes. And so uh, to have written the song and then to actually meet him in person and, and then also to play for his uh, birthday party, his first birthday party yes. at the uh, American Ambassador's Home in Pretoria, was quite an incredible experience. Well, I, I can remember the concert at Ellis Park almost yes. like it was, you know, yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it, it was, I mean, it, what an incredible time to have been alive in South Africa and to, to have experienced that moment, yes. So how did you just briefly give us the inside story of that? Because I've never really spoken to anybody about how the song was put together and the, who selected, who decided, who gets to sing which lines and performs which instruments. Well, uh, Ray Peary was the producer of the project. Yeah. And basically, uh, Ray I mean, uh, called me and said he wanted me to come to the studio and he wanted me to work on the song. Mm. And, and then I started writing and, and working on the song. And, and, you know, and I was a member of the band called Teta, you mm. know, with Paquito Kumalo mm. and Musi Kumalo and Lawrence Manchisa yes. at the time. Yeah. And um, so, you know, in our band, I mean, I mean, we, you know, guys were contributing bass lines and uh, mm. rhythms and mm. stuff. And, uh, but I was basically uh, writing, I mean, the, the song and the structure of it. And then when we had the structure, we, we called Ray in and Ray said, wow, that's great. That's exactly what we need, you know yeah. what I mean? And then Ray spoke to Jennifer Ferguson, yes. I mean, to, to contribute lyrically to, to the song, and he called in Victor and Tony yes. to help with arrangements, yes. I mean, of the song. So essentially, the four of us became the creator of that song. Yes. You know, uh, Ray Peary, myself, Jennifer Ferguson, and Victor and Tony. Yeah. Great song. Oh, thank you very much. Big song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I, even today when I listen to it and I, and I watch it, I mean, what a, I mean, an incredible video. I mean, I mean, I, uh, uh, I mean, of the uh, a song, that, I mean, that was made. And um, I, I'm just so grateful that I was a part of that. But now you've gone and worked with the, you know, the, on the Lion King project and worked with uh, the Stevie Wonder, Alicia Keys and the musicians of uh, the Stevie Wonder band and so on. Just, you know, Give me a sense of what what kind of experience that is. Well, I mean, I was I was very fortunate in that I I mean, when I left South Africa in 1993, I I was really interested in writing music for movies, and mm. then I went into um, the a program uh, called uh, Scoring for Motion Pictures and Television at the University of Southern California, and uh, and I had. I mean, the, the privilege of being taught by, I mean, some of the world's greatest film composers from Jerry Goldsmith, John Williams, uh, Bill Conti, guys who've written music for Magnificent Seven, mm. Star Trek, Star Wars, you know. And so you're sitting in the class and you're like, wow, this yeah. is so unbelievable that yeah. you're getting this kind of uh, education. And then, and then for all intents and purposes, my, I thought my performing, performing career had ended. But to my surprise, when I graduated from uh, University of Southern California, I got calls that people knew of me as a player. Yes. 
and uh, and I, I said, well, okay, I just graduated. Nobody knows me. I need to make some money, yes. <laughs> you know. So let me just go and play. Yes. And then the thing snowballed from there. And uh, before I knew it, I was, uh, you know, uh, some of my friends, Bagita Kumalo, yeah. who, I mean, who was playing with Paul Simon already. He lived in New York. Uh, he had invited me to come play some gigs with him, and then Yuma Sakel heard that I was there, and then when he came to yeah. to, to to the States, he asked me to be part of his band, yes. and so I played with him, uh, um, Bagiti and Ian Herman, and, uh, and uh, sometimes Fana Zulu would yeah. play with, with us as well. So we formed the core band for uh, Brayu. And then, um, you know, the, uh, the World Cup um, happened and um, they needed I mean, to put a band together and I got the call that, yeah. hey, you know, we heard that, you know, you're from South Africa and we're looking for a keyboard player interested in playing. And of course, I jumped sky and said, yes, of course. And that's how I got to play at the, the, the opening ceremonies yes. of, the, of the World Cup and then played with John Legend and um, also worked with, I mean, incredible uh, Jackson Brown, I mean, Randy Brecker, I mean, mm. brother to Michael Brecker, I mean, great, uh, I mean, pioneering jazz musicians of fusion, fusion jazz. And uh, and just being in America and being at the place, a lot of times, it's of course, it's about who you know, but it's also about where you are. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and, you know, people assume that you, at the level, if they hear about you, you must know your stuff. Yes. And so, um, you know, just, I mean, I mean, uh, I was also part of an organization or a spiritual uh, uh, organization called the uh, Agape, which yes. is, and, uh, and through that I was, I mean, I mean, I played with, <laughs> from uh, Olivia Newton-John to uh, Pharaoh Saunders to uh, Shaka Khan, um, members from Earth, Wind and Fire. I mean, it's just a whole range well, of... I, I wanted to ask you about some of the people you well, mentioned you, you, there. Yes, no, yes. One of the people who fascinates me a lot, I'm <laughs> very much into his music, is Pharaoh Sanders. I oh, wow. actually, I love his music. Well, that, that, that's <laughs> incredible because, uh, uh, you know, I had a very interesting uh, interaction with him. I mean, after performing with him at Agape, um, I wanted him to perform on my, I mean, on my first, uh, my debut jazz CD. Yes. And somehow we just we couldn't we could not make it happen, and it was I was very sad because of his relationship with South African mm. and African music, and also I mean his love for Murray Makeba, yeah, and um, you know he was the sort of uh, the stand-in for John Coltrane, uh. so he was I mean incredible legend that I mean I mean not only for American music but the fact that he had actually ventured into performing African music yes, and specifically yes. South African music. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he hung out with Murray McKeever and Brayu and so forth, you know. All right. Thanks very much, Thank Rashid, you. for paying us a visit. Rashid Thank Lani you. enjoyed his performance this past weekend, by the way, and I've been enjoying his music for years. And he's still going strong. I'm pleased to note that. Uh, okay. And we hope that you enjoyed the, the story and the interview tonight. And uh, until next time, good night to you. Good night. Good night.